what we're going to do now is have a look at some of the extended primitive objects that you can get in 3D Studio Max and 3D Studio Max Design that really set it apart as a modeling tool. And the first one that we're going to be looking at is walls. And we've got our sort of floor plan here, which is going to give us a, a really good sort of outline and a path to follow. And what I really want to do is I'd like to start putting some walls into there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Create Geometry. And from there, I'm going to drop down to the AEC Extended menu. And what that's going to do is that's going to give us some foliage and some railings and some walls. And really, we're going to have a look at those a little bit later on. For the moment, what I'm looking for is the wall option. And what I'm going to do is... I'm first of all going to set the width of my wall. Now remember this is the system units and my system units are currently set to be centimeters so I want to set the width of this to about 10 centimeters and the height to about 240 which is 2 meters 40. Now you'll notice also here I've got a justification and what we really need to do is just check out which way that justification is going to be. So if I say centered, actually first of all I turn on my 3D snap, right click and make sure it's set to vertex. If I click down here and then I click off at the end point there and just right click to stop, you can see if I zoom in here that what that's done is that wall, actually probably best to look at that in wireframe, so that wall has gone right the way down the middle there. Okay, and that's what the centered justification is. Now I may not want to do that because what I'd like to do is I'd like to have it justified um, to the left. So because uh, obviously I don't want to be cutting into the room. So I'm just going to delete that object quickly. And I'm probably going to get this the wrong way around. So I'll click on left first of all, and then we'll do our justification. And there we go, I got it right first time. Now, you might think, hang on a moment, you have just said justify left, and the wall has appeared on the right hand side. Well, this is because it's the line that you draw that guides this wall, and then it is justified to the left hand side of the wall, not the wall being justified the other way around if you follow me. Um, it, a little bit hard to explain but it's best done visually like this. So when I say I want it justified to the right what's going to happen is the wall will be inside the building as you can see there. Now one of the things that we're going to have to be careful of with this is we're going to need to be able to see as much of this as we possibly can in one go. So what I'm going to suggest doing is possibly just coming to the, our top view and zooming out so that if we need to we can use our interactive pan and I'll start from somewhere simple and straightforward like here and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start drawing the whole of this wall all the way around here just following just by left clicking round now it may seem that this is going to be a little bit sort of laborious but it is actually worth the effort. Now when I get to here, I can't use my middle mouse to pan because otherwise what will happen is uh, I will lose focus on my tool. And really that's not what you want to happen because you want to try and get around this all in one go. So I'm going to press the I key, which is the interactive pan, and that will give me all the way down to here so I can carry on going. And we'll work our way around and I'll press I again. And again, I will have to work my way around this wall. And again, we'll press I. And we'll just follow ourselves around. Now really, what we're doing is, is we're assuming that we're going to be doing an interior render of this building. And let's just go there. Let's come up I for interactive zoom. There we go, interactive pan, and I can left click and it says, do I want to weld point? And we're gonna say yes, and then right click. So if I come back to my perspective view and I press F3, what I've got now is one complete wall with all of my edges in there. Everything's all welded together. If I go to my modify panel and I come down here to vertex I can if I need to now let's just uh, oh, lost everything let's just rotate this round and zoom in if 
I go to my F3 mode, you can see here we've actually got vertices. And what's happened is there's been a spline created. And that spline, let's just take off this here, that spline is really then growing the wall from it. So it's very, very similar to the way that we created walls before by taking the outline of this building, uh, the edge, and then making it outline and then extruding it up. What we've done is we've already defined how wide the wall will be and how high the wall will be. Uh, and then after that, we've just gone around and click, 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 and we've created it. One thing you can't do, as you can see from here from my modify tab, is I can't go back, I can't make that wall wider or thinner, and I can't change the height. So if you muck it up and you get to this stage and you think, oh, actually I'd like that wall to be a bit higher or I'd like it to be a little bit wider, then really what you've got to do is either stop and put that segment in. And you can see here that I can attach multiple sections of wall, um, which I really didn't want to get into before, but you can do. Um, you, you've basically, you've just got to go back again. So do be careful do watch out for the fact that when you're creating these walls make sure you get the width correct the first time round and the height as well but after that what you've got is a very interactive wall that we are then going to build on going forwards